I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us and to be with God. Well then, let's raise our voices with our hymn of praise, Gather Us In, number 2236. Okay. <laughs> Just as the resurrected Christ breathed the Spirit onto the disciples. 
we would receive the gift of the Spirit's power and wisdom as the life giving and peace keeping Holy Spirit blazes through us today. We would receive the gift of the Spirit's power that unites us as the body of Christ. Amen. Father, we ask you to bless all these assembled that we may be open to your Spirit. Act upon your guidance and bless us with your love. Amen. Our responsive reading is Psalm 104, which you'll find actually on page 826. It'll be verses 1 through 13 and 24 through 35. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are your You are clothed with honor and majesty and cover yourself with light as with a garment. You have stretched out the heavens like a hand and have laid the beams of your chamber on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. You make the wind with your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundation so that it should never be shaken. You covered it with the deep as to the garment. The water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, they rose to the light. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place where you appointed for them. You stood on them which they should not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give springs to every beast of the field. The wild bats is plunged to the earth. Above the springs, the birds of the air have their nests. They sing among the branches. From your lofty place, you water the mountains. From the fruit of your work, the earth is satisfied. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom that made them all, the earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things and no more are there. The living things flow strong and great. There go the ships, and within the events where you formed a playman. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it. When you open your hands, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his work. He looks down at earth and at animals. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord, in whom I rejoice. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord.
where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speak in the native language of each. And amazed and astonished they asked, Are not all these who are speaking? Galileans? And how it is that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Sargia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, and our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet of Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, for your young men shall see visions, and old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and the signs of the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, and the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And with that good news, let us sing hymn number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. <laughs>
Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirit, and to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allows each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, through many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. And the gospel lesson comes from John 7, 37 through 39. This is rivers of living water. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. the history of Pentecost. Originally, it was a festival celebrating the first harvest. Later, it became a commemoration of the giving of Canaan to the people of Israel. After that, it was an observance of the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. So on for a lot of iterations. Um, it was even referred to during the festival of wheat. After, um, so the apostles were ready for a small celebration commemorating their history. What a surprise they got. But let's back up to Acts 1 to see how we got here. The apostles had been traveling and being taught by Jesus. They had shared meals and seen miracles. Before he ascended, he told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, of which, he said, you have heard me speak. Mm -hmm. But even all the time with Jesus, they misunderstood. They thought that they were going to have Israel reestablished. They had forgotten what he taught them. Instead, he said, they would receive power and authority to be his witnesses by the Holy Spirit. Then he ascended to heaven. They replaced Judas with Matthias and waited. Fire, wind, speaking in tongues, we arrived at Acts 2. They were absorbed by the Holy Spirit. 
They had lost their teacher in the flesh, but gained him in the spirit. He would be with them forever. They could reach all people and all nations. Jesus commissioned them, and God gave them the tools. Power from God, knowledge from Jesus. What a combination. Sadly, there are some that have just trivialized, normalized, downgrade what they don't understand. They are drunk, said the people. But Peter is quick to refocus us on the powerful reality that is happening. He says, through the prophet Joel, I will pour out my spirit to all mankind. We will see divinely prompted visions and dreams. There will be divine signs, not drunk and rampant. Jesus foretold the event on Pentecost. Now, let us travel to Corinthians. It states you need the Holy Spirit to discern those visions and dreams. That all men and women are given gifts, not the same gifts, but different ones. And you need the Spirit to make these gifts special. They are given by the extraordinary power and grace of the Holy Spirit. I once heard a quote that said, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is a little something extra. The Holy Spirit is that little extra. We can do good works on our own, but with the fire and conviction of the Spirit, they can be extraordinary. Our gifts are distributed by the Holy Spirit. Different parts united together. Verse 13 says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body united together, drinking of that Spirit. So there would be no discord or division in the body. So Jesus came to teach us all and to give us his spirit. But we are not afford this knowledge. These gifts, if it is to go through us to those we encounter in our lives. He breathed on us. Peace be with you. Receive the spirit of holiness of ministry, of mission, of love. Love from the strong center of peace, from the contentment of faith, from the extraordinary power and grace of the Holy Spirit. Lean into it. Trust it. Receive it. Let us pray. God of wind and flame, set us on fire this morning as we celebrate the explosion of your Holy Spirit coming into the world on the day of Pentecost. Remind us that the gift you gave that day was not just the gift to speak in different tongues, but also the gift of hearing and comprehension, discernment. May your Holy Spirit keep us attuned to the voices all around us, to those who need us to be bearers of your love and compassion, and to meet those needs. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we get to be, come to you today with a lot on our hearts. We pray for family, for healing prayers, especially for Joyce's family as they navigate the end stages of Joyce's life. Her friends and family, she's been so much to this congregation. Lord, help her through the transition of this next phase of her life. For our, our friend Barbara King and her brother Skip. For those that come to us years later, knowing that we do in intercessory prayers for others, that we are honored to come before you and ask for blessings for others. For traveling mercies, for those that are in our congregation and out, as well as those that will come to our area for the Mother Central Rally next weekend. 
payday be patient and kind and maybe not have any accidents. Lord, please keep our city, state, nation, and world in your prayers in these tumultuous times. It is very hard for us to understand what is going on, but we know that these events we put in your hands, as Lord, we said last weekend, put them in a bubble and let them go. We trust and lean on your grand plan and not in our own now. We ask you to bless all of us this for the remainder of this holiday weekend. And we ask you this by saying those words that Jesus gave us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, now will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Each other 
until we meet again. So let me confirm it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice.